So the area I live in, in the Big Island, there's a lot of yogis out here. There's a lot of spiritual communities out here. And many times I'd like to go and partake of many of their activities, ecstatic dance, all sorts of things, right? And when I talk to people in these communities, most of them are yogis, okay? And not a lot of them are big fans of lifting weights. And it's brought to mind something that I see all the time, and you guys will hear me talk about it sometimes, but the reason these guys don't like to lift weights is because their perception of weightlifting is that it's this like really aggressive, like mind over matter, force, like, total disconnection from my body. I'm just going to brute force it to have muscle. And quite frankly, I know why they feel that way is because most of the fitness world is like that, you know, and I sit there and I try to explain where I'm coming from. I'm like, it's not like that for me. My process with lifting weights is much like your experience of yoga. I'm connecting to my body. I'm listening when something is off I will do whatever it takes to help it there. I will spend any amount of money. I will do whatever it takes. But the relationship that I have with lifting that I think we need to talk about because you know what we're doing is all this like, no excuses, go, like freaking, you know, no offense to David Goggins, but he kind of leads out on some of this. I like some of his stuff, but then he takes it to this place where it's like, oh, my foot's broken. Oh, well, keep effing going. Yeah, that makes me awesome, you know, and that's the mentality that is prevalent widely in, in the weightlifting world. And so people come into it and they think, okay, that's how I got to be to make this happen. I got to be, have all this force energy. I've got to like basically abuse my body in order to get it to be a certain way for me. And I know that because I deal with that mentality every freaking day. It is one of the main reasons. Well, there's many reasons, but it is one of the big reasons I had to pull mindset coaching into the work I do because I am working every single day to get rid of this mentality towards eating healthy, towards lifting weights, towards losing weight. It's this like brute force, like you're my bitch body and you're going to do what I say, restrictive overbearing, aggressive energy, and we are missing it. I feel like a weirdo in the weightlifting world. I meet very few people who have a relationship with weightlifting that I have. It is extremely rare. I'm like, I'm going in there. I'm connected to my body. I'm having spiritual epiphanies. I'm so deeply listening. I'm, I'm supporting my body. I'm like seeing what it's capable of, encouraging it. If it's telling me to back off, I'm like, okay, got it. If it's telling me something's wrong, I'm like, okay, got it. What do you need? Oh, you need me to go to a chiropractor, sports massage? Got it. You got it. PRP, you got it. I don't care what it is. I'm listening, right? Maybe it's, you just, let's just walk a little while today and that's it. Okay, no problem right? But this doesn't, do you hear very many people in the fitness industry talking like this in weightlifting? Not really. <laughs> it's, it's, there's so much ego in it. There's so much force energy that it's actually repelling a lot of people who are more connected to their bodies from even weightlifting. They associate it. They asso associate building muscle and strength, something that is so good for us that is like increases longevity. It's good for our joints. It enhances your metabolism like nothing else I've ever found. It makes you insulin sensitive. You get all of these like beautiful cascade of hormetic stressors from it. It is healthy for us, but there's so many people who are turned off from it because of this energy of brute force, disconnection. You're my bitch body and you're gonna do what I say. And I'm gonna have all these expectations on you. And I'm going to, you know, just be totally disconnected. And that's not it. So if you're interested in changing how we look at weightlifting with me, please join me. Start thinking about how you're showing up with your body. And when you're in the gym, when you're weightlifting, do you have pain all over? You got low back pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, ankle pain, whatever. And you're just like waiting for it to go away and it just keeps coming back and you just do nothing about it. Sorry to tell you, but you're one of those people that they don't, people who have, other, have found other ways to enhance their body are trying not to become like. So let's not do that. 
Let's change how we are looking at weightlifting. It can be a beautiful spiritual experience. For me, weightlifting is a spiritual experience. I am tapped in in there. I am listening and I'm encouraging my body. I'm working with it, not against it. I'm not forcing it. I'm, I'm seeing what it's capable of and I'm listening and I'm also encouraging. It's, I've noticed this forever, okay? And I, you'll hear me speak up on it from time to time when people are like, that's a lot of hard work and discipline. I'm like, that's not what it feels like. <laughs> that's not what it feels like. I'm just letting you know that's not what it feels like. But it's like, it's not, I feel like a lone island sometimes in this mentality. I'm like, mm, I don't hardly see anyone who resonates with me on this fully. They might a little bit and then they get straight back into the like, gotta go hard, gotta push, push, push. It's not like that. When you learn to enjoy the experience of seeing what your body is capable of and you're like learning like, oh, okay, this is a little off. I get stuff like that all the time. I, I have a, I was supposed to have a chiropractor visit today, but she's sick, but I have one now. It's Thursday. I go get regular massages. I do whatever needs to do. I stretch how my body tells me to. Like, it's not like I'm just in there like brute forcing myself into something. I don't even have any goal, aesthetic goals at all. I just love the feeling of engaging my nervous system, lighting it up, feeling my whole body come alive, seeing what it can do, but in a loving, mutual respect kind of way where I actually listen to. So I just had to make a video about this because it's one thing to just see it and like talk about it from within the people who are weightlifting, but to see that people are so repelled, they're so repulsed by the energy that they're seeing in weightlifting. They just think everyone is like that who's weightlifting. I was like, shit, man, we got to be a little bit louder about this because like, I'm not saying you have to lift weights, but our day and age, it is such an amazing gift to your body if you're doing it in a loving energy, supportive energy. It's just like, how else are you going to on the daily, like engage your nervous system like that? I'm on a huge thing internally right now. So if there's any like researchers out there listening to this or anybody else is onto this. I think I, I just, from a place of knowing and I'm watching to see what's coming out, I just, I'm like, it's all about the nervous system. It's all about it. I can just tell. Cause if you, if I go in and lift weights and it's just only hypertrophy focused or just band work, there's something that happens in me when my nervous system gets lit up from that heavy lift that is just like, makes everything magic sauce in my body. My metabolism is easier. My sleep's easier. My mental health's better. Like everything's just like, <laughs> so that's why I get in there. Cause I can, I've experimented with this enough. I've taken months off of weightlifting. I like to challenge my belief systems a lot. I'm like, okay, I'll just go hike and do yoga and that kind of stuff. Walk. And I get back to weightlifting and I'm like, nah, dude, <laughs> this is better. This is, I can tell that everything is better in my body when I'm doing this consistently. So that's where I'm coming from. It's not a place of like, I want my body to look a certain way or it's, it's all love and it, and it's self love too, apart from my body because my whole soul just feels alive. So how about we wait lift for these type of reasons? Do you notice what happened, like what the rest of your trajectory of your day feels like on days that you lift, start noticing that. When you start noticing the results that you're getting from all the choices that you're making, it's much easier to just start wanting to make the choices that help you feel good. Um, somebody asked what my diet looks like. <laughs> so you may have noticed I get asked this a lot and I don't really answer because I don't mean to, I feel like an arrogant asshole saying this, but like, I don't think that you can be where I'm at with food if you've been eating like a suboptimally for a long time. I don't think you can just jump to where I'm at. I think you have to go through like a training phase, right? So I eat whatever I want. I don't track my food. I'm not like meticulous about anything. I just, I, I learned through the ropes that I take people through when I coach them. I've sat with this so long. I'm like, can we just do this intuitively? Can we, I would love it if we could just get there intuitively. But for most people, they don't have the awareness. They don't understand like the composition of their foods that they're eating, how that's impacting their mental health, their ability to build muscle, their mood, their sleep, all of that. So I do take people on a journey of tracking macros and understanding like 
because most people, I mean, at least for me, when I was eating standard American diet, I didn't, it's just what sounded good, you know? <laughs> it wasn't like, I didn't understand how the composition of my food was impacting me. So anyway, just saying, I do focus on, you know, protein every time I eat, my body craves protein. I've experimented with that too. I'm like, oh, there's all these cool little vegan food trucks and whatever, I'll just see how that, I just do not feel as good if I do not have enough protein. I have a lot of muscle mass, you know, so my body just craves it. Um, and just whole foods, you know, I'm not a stickler psycho about stuff, but I was when I was first learning. You gotta, you gotta wear the, tra you gotta have the training wheels on for a little bit to get, to gain that awareness. I mean, do it however you want, but that's why I say like, you're probably not going to jump from a eating style that's not getting you what you want to just eating whatever you want and it is getting you what you want. Like you got to learn like what, <laughs> what your patterns are. And it was a freaking journey, dude. I was on standard American diet. I was as addicted as hell to all sorts of like fast food treats. I used to have home goods, baked goods at home every day. You know, they were just on rotation. Like it was a freaking journey getting out of that mindset. But if you're willing to like go through that transition journey and like really take that by the horns, then you will get to a place where I'm at where it just feels normal to eat it healthy almost all the time. You know, I'll have little things here and there, but my desire is so low because I've learned how they make me feel not only um, on a physiological level, but also like on a spiritual level. Like I can tell my vibration doesn't feel the same. So I'm like, mm. It, it loses its appeal real quick for me like that, you know, but those are all awarenesses that there's only one way you get those awarenesses <laughs> by going through it. So that's why I don't tell people like how I eat. Cause I get the impression that people want to just eat how I'm eating. And I'm like, trust me, I've tried it. <laughs> I've tried it with clients. It's just like really slow progress. So I do recommend if you're trying to actually change your body composition then like you track your food so you become aware of what your patterns are and I guarantee you're gonna stop tracking on the weekends and you're gonna go through that whole phase it's gonna take months and months maybe years to really nail this stuff so yeah I know that doesn't sell like hotcakes might change your whole life and body in three weeks thing you know but I'm not in the I'm not in the business of bullshit I'm in the business of like actually helping people change their lives <laughs> So I'll never bullshit you guys. But anyway, just closing that up. I just like, it makes me sad to see that something that can be so beneficial for human health is being, people have their habit at arm's length, weightlifting because of all these like kind of toxic mentalities around it. It's like wounded behaviors. It's like, I'm not good enough. And I got to prove I'm good enough through my body. And like, so that leads to all these like addictive over the top. Like, I don't care if I have an effed up shoulder. I have to lift my shoulders. I got to build my shoulders. It's like, ugh. and people who are in a more healed place see that from the outside. And they're like, the hell, like, I'm not, I don't want to become one of those people. It's being real. So if you're in a healed place, if you're in a healthy place, Please, if you, if you know that you have a mindset like I do around weightlifting where it's like, it's all love, it's all connection, it's all like you're listening to your body, you're honoring it, you're like a, a healthy mom who's like, yeah, I know what you're capable of, but I'm not going to like push you past your breaking limit because I love you, you know, like if you have that, speak up. We need more voices like that because they are rare. We got the whole damn gym full of wounded shit. And people who, especially yogis, I will say, you know, cause like you go into a yoga class, what do they say? Listen to your body, breathe through it, connect with it. Right. So they're coming from that place of like super connection to their body. And they're seeing all these like no excuses, injuries, like crazy. Like they're like, mm, no thanks, but it doesn't have to be like that. So I guess I'll close this by saying like examine, really examine what your relationship with the gym and weightlifting and like your your deeper whys, you know, like your experience of it, like the actual experience of it, like what's going on with you. I'm tired of uh, abuse, self-abuse culture infiltrating my industry. I don't even say I'm in the fitness industry. I'm embarrassed. I'm literally embarrassed. I hate when people say, oh, are you in the fitness industry? I'm like, 
No, I mean, kind of, but not real. I like to say I'm in the health industry because the fitness industry is so effing toxic. Be careful who you're following on here. There's a lot of wounded shit in the fitness industry. A lot of proving. So if you sense that energy, just unfollow. I mean, unless you want that, <laughs> do you. But, yeah. All right. I'll close it up. Just off the cuff feelings about all this stuff. It's we got a long ways to go till I think collectively we have a healthy relationship with what it means to build muscle and strength in our bodies. All right, I guess.